just said the difference between her father who was lying because he was defensive he was trying to protect himself from his his, his father who was punitive and donald who was lying to just help himself no matter who he hurt that's the key problem that our field has been dealing with in trying to understand it donald trump is just different from other people other people can lie and cheat and perhaps they have reasons which we all try to understand in our kind of work but donald trump is a true psychopath he's uh, in common language he's evil that's not name calling that's accurate that's to emphasize that he is simply different from other human beings so that's what i really took away from from the book i think she's right when she says that narcissism uh, doesn't uh, goes only so far that's right narcissism is the least of his troubles he's he's like you know other psychopaths he's just like a serial killer he has killed a lot of people he's like hitler or stalin those people are just different it's a rare condition they're different from other people and yes cheating is a way of life lying is a way of life hurting people he has no conscience i think she's showing us where that came from uh, Tim O'Brien, you've actually read the book. Uh, you, like Rachel Maddow, have had a chance to read the book. Uh, I give you an open floor, Tim, on anything that we haven't mentioned or you, anything you want to emphasize that we have mentioned. Well, there's so much in it, Lawrence. I've got red stickies all over this book uh, <laughs> because uh, I think this is a very important book. I have a pretty high threshold at this point for Trump books that tell us something new about the president. Um, or so-called insider accounts. And what's, I think, important here um, is that Mary Trump comes to this as someone with, a, with firsthand knowledge of how the Trump family operated, evolved, fed on, on its members in a very destructive way. Uh, she's a trained clinical psychologist. Her tone in the book is utterly reliable and credible. There is not uh, it is not a, a, a tale that is pulled down by, I think, any bitterness on her part. And she has ample reason to be bitter. Her relatives uh, maneuvered to cheat her out of her inheritance. Uh, they have tried to stop this book in court. She has re repeatedly thrown herself in harm's way, I think, to get a narrative out that is one of the most seminal accounts of Donald Trump's um, emotional and psychological landscape. She describes him in the book as someone uh, who has an antisocial personality disorder, has probably struggled his whole life with a learning disability, and ticks off about every box you could imagine uh, in, in diagnostic manuals for someone with myriad psychological problems. Uh, she is witty. She is observant. She tells the story chronologically and, and talks about uh, her own father's demise through his own, um, his own problems with alcoholism, but also his inability to navigate the very rough and terrifying psychological landscape that Fred Trump set up inside his own family. He was a dictatorial presence. He was emotionally cold, and he had a very binary view of the world. There were losers and there were winners. There was nothing else in between. And that you, you were a sucker if you were dumb enough to be a loser and you should get out there and do anything it could take to be a winner. Fred Trump Jr. couldn't rise to that standard. Donald Trump absorbed it wholeheartedly and there are so many attributes of Fred Trump that came to reside inside of Donald. And I think this book is, is a very important addition to understanding not only where Donald Trump came from, but, but why in the particular mo the specific moment we're in right now, he's so dangerous. You know, I, I've always said, when people ask me, you know, who would you like to interview? I've always said I would really like to interview Donald Trump's parents because I would like to know how we got to this. Uh, Mary Trump is uh, the next best choice and the only available choice uh, at this point. I, I want to read another diagnostic passage uh, uh, in the material that has emerged from the book today. Uh, this is uh, Mary Trump writing. A case could be made that he also meets the criteria for antisocial personality disorder, which in its most severe form is generally considered sociopathy, but can also refer to chronic criminality, arrogance, and disregard for the rights of others. Is there a comorbidity? Probably. Donald, uh, 
also may meet some of the criteria for dependent personality disorder, the hallmarks of which include an inability to make decisions or take responsibility, discomfort with being alone, and going to excessive lengths to obtain support from others. Uh, Dr. Dodas, uh, your reaction to that passage? It, all those terms are accurate. It's just that they overlap each other. I think she's selecting terms from the DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual. That makes it confusing. All of those are parts of being psychopath, arrogance, uh, uncaring about others, and lack of empathy, lack of conscience, uh, criminality. They're all really the same thing if you understand him as a single person who has this problem. Absolutely, and he's had it his whole life. And he will continue and get worse. Uh, so, Dr. Dotis, uh, so far, it's fair to say there's nothing that surprises you in this book. No, there's nothing that surprises me. It, it's what you expected. It, it fits with what you were seeing from a distance. Tim O'Brien, let me ask the same thing to you. Uh, you wrote a book about Donald Trump. Uh, he cooperated with you as you were writing that book, and then he tried to sue you uh, to block that book, just like he tried to sue uh, Mary Trump to uh, block this book. Uh, you've studied him very closely. Uh, you know more than most of us by miles. Uh, were you surprised by anything in this book? Uh, what I mean yes, is there's I certainly am. a lot of facts you didn't know, but are they consistent with what you knew before you read the book? Um, so there was a lot that surprised me, Lawrence. Uh, there's a lot in there that is very consistent uh, with what, you know, I know of Donald Trump from covering going back, you know, to, to 1990 when I began covering with Wayne Barrett. Um, uh, all of the tales about the family, about the business dealings, uh, about the, this internecine warfare, the centrality of money to the family's life. Um, the lack of real emotional empathy or connection among all of them. What, Tim, those what, are all surprised you, what surprised you the most, Tim? Of anything that did surprise you, what surprised you the most? Uh, you know, she describes the family um, mansion in Queens as the house, capital T, capital H. And it comes across in this book as a very haunted, empty place. There's a very, uh, there's a wonderful description of a basement where Fred has an elaborate bar prepared that doesn't have any alcohol because he's a teetotaler. There's giant life-size Indian uh, wooden carvings, of Native American chiefs in the basement. Um, and Mary goes there for, re for refuge because everything that's going on upstairs in the house is, is um, it, it veers from um, tragic comic to emotionally dangerous. And there's a lot of detail in there that's fresh. Okay, the price of the movie rights just went through the roof with Tim O'Brien's description of just that room. Tim O'Brien, Dr. Lance Dotas, thank you both for joining us tonight and starting us off. We really appreciate it.